Well, good morning, children, and welcome to Tabernacle Cardiff Sunday School. Uh, let's start Sunday School this morning as we usually do, uh, with a word of prayer. So let's make sure that we're sat nice and still, have our hands together and our eyes closed. Our gracious God and our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you, Lord, that it is your day. And the Lord, at the start of this, your day, you have brought us here safely to Sunday School, Lord, to learn about you. Lord, we pray that you will bless this hour of worship. We pray that you will pour out in, uh, your Holy Spirit and meet uh, with us wherever we are. Uh, draw near to us now, Lord, we pray. For we ask all these things in our Saviour's name, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, let's uh, begin Sunday School as we usually do, by singing our Sunday School prayer, which is Father in this place of worship. Well, let's remind ourselves now what we looked at in Sunday School last week. Uh, for those of you uh, that were with us, um, you'll remember uh, that we uh, have continued in our series um, in Genesis, uh, but we began um, a new story, didn't we? Like a mini story uh, last week. Uh, now, can anybody remember the name um, of the main character of last week's story? That's right, it was Joseph, uh, and Joseph uh, was uh, one of Jacob's 12 sons. And we learned, didn't we, that uh, Joseph had come to know the Lord at a very, very young age, um, and that uh, he wanted not only to please uh, his earthly father, that was Jacob, um, but also his heavenly father. Um, now, we'll hear a bit more of a review in our lesson uh, today, um, but uh, we, we learned, didn't we, that uh, Joseph had these uh, dreams um, and that uh, his brothers um, really did not like Joseph very much. In fact, they hated him because uh, Jacob loved Joseph so much um, that uh, he made it very plain that Joseph was his favourite son. Uh, and uh, he gave him a coat of many colours. But through all these difficulties, uh, Joseph still loved the Lord. Uh, and this ties us in nicely to last week's memory verse. Um, now, can uh, anybody remember uh, last week's memory verse? Well, let's have a look at it on the screen now, shall we? Um, it was this one. Uh, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. And that's in Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. And there's a few words I just want to pick out uh, there. And we know. Uh, we don't think we know there is a surety, there is a certainty um, about it that all things work together for good to them, that's Joseph in this case, uh, that love God. Uh, and that can be true uh, of you and all those that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal saviour. So let's say that again uh, together before we take uh, the words away. And we know that all things work together 
for good to them that love God. Romans chapter 8 verse 28. Well, let's take the words away now from the screen and see if we can uh, remember that. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Romans chapter 8 verse 28. Well, let's bring it back up onto the screen now and see that we got it right. Uh, you should be able to see now. Uh, yes, we have. Um, let's say it once more time, once more together. Um, for we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Romans chapter 8 verse 28. There, and you can see uh, our uh, recent Instagram uh, photo uh, with the memory verse there um, from last week. Well, let's now uh, sing um, our first hymn uh, together, and it's a new one uh, that we haven't sung before, so it's nice to learn some new hymns um, through Sunday School, um, and it's uh, this one. Uh, stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. To him that overcometh, a crown of life shall be. He with the King of glory shall reign eternally. Well, it's now time to turn to God's Word. Uh, so if you have your Bibles with you, um, could you turn with me, please, uh, to the uh, book of Genesis. That's the first book of the Bible. Uh, and we're going to turn to chapter 40 today. Uh, it's coming up on the screen there. And we're going to read from verses 9 through to the end of the chapter. That's verse 23. So that's Genesis uh, chapter 40, and we're going to read from verses 9 to 23. So let us hear the word of God. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph, and said to him, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me. And in the vine were three branches, and it was as though it budded, and her blossoms shot forth. And the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's 
hand. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee unto thy place. And thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand. After the former manner whence thou wast his butler. But think on me when it shall be well with thee, and show kindness, I pray thee, unto me, and make mention of me unto Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews, and here also have I done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said unto Joseph, I also was in my dream, and behold, I had three white baskets on my head. And in the uppermost basket there was of all manner of bake meats for Pharaoh, and the birds did eat them out of the baskets upon my head. And Joseph answered and said, This is the interpretation thereof. The three baskets are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head from off thee, and shall hang thee on a tree, and the birds shall eat thy flesh from off thee. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants. And he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. And he restored the chief butler unto his butlership again, and he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. And so reads the word of God. Well, let's come to our Heavenly Father now in prayer. So let's make sure that we're sat nice and still, have our hands together and our eyes closed. Our gracious God and our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Uh, We thank you, Lord, that it is your day and that, Lord, you have brought us here to Sunday school. Gracious God, we thank you uh, that thou art our creator and our maker, Lord, and that you uh, reign in heaven above. And that, Lord, uh, you know all things and that you know what is best for us. Lord, we thank you for this time now, Lord, and we pray for this lesson uh, that we are about to hear, Lord. We pray that you might give us uh, listening ears, Lord. We pray that you might give us uh, concentrating minds, Lord. Take away any distractions and understanding hearts. Lord, we would ask and pray uh, that you would draw near to us, Lord, wherever we are. For we ask all these things in our Saviour's name, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, before we uh, come to today's lesson, uh, we'll go straight into it uh, after we have sung uh, our next hymn, uh, which is uh, a favourite of the Sunday School, but one we haven't sung um, for a little while now, probably since uh, the beginning of the summer. Um, And it's uh, this one. Uh, God who made the earth, the air, the sky, the sea. Oh, 
Hello everyone, welcome back. In the last few weeks, we've been seeing God's great plan unfolding in Genesis, the first book of the Bible. First, we met Abraham, called to be the father of many people in a new land. Then his son, Isaac, a gift from God in his old age. Isaac had twins, Esau and Jacob. Jacob lived up to his name, which meant supplanter, when he stole the birthright of his older brother Esau. God was gracious to Jacob, and he was later renamed Israel after he wrestled with God in prayer. Last week, Joseph, the second youngest of Jacob's twelve sons, unlike his older brothers, he trusted the Lord. Jacob favoured Joseph over the others, and Joseph had a hard time from his brothers as a result. Then we heard that God sent Joseph dreams in which he appeared greater than all his brothers. Although these dreams would eventually come true and Joseph would be used by God in his great plan of salvation for his people, while he was still a young man, his brothers were resentful and wished him dead. Thankfully, the Lord prevented them from killing him. Instead, they sold him as a slave into Egypt. When people who do not know and trust the Lord Jesus hear about wars and murders and terrible viruses in the news, they do not say God is in control, but the Bible says many times, especially in Psalms, the Lord reigns. He rules. All things are in his good hands and he is watching over us. The memory verse from last week, and we know that all things work together from, for good to them that love God, Romans 8 verse 28. What does it mean? Often we cannot understand some of the twists and turns in our life's journey. We think when things seem to go wrong, why is this happening? It feels like the lights have gone out and we are in the dark. We might even get angry at God. The story of Joseph's life shows us that while God's ways may not be the ways that we would choose to go, they are higher and better than our ways even though we cannot see this at the time. Joseph had to go through very hard times, but he knew God was in control. As you hear what happened to Joseph, remember God has a plan. In Genesis chapter 39, we find poor Joseph, Jacob's favourite son, now in an Egyptian marketplace, waiting to be sold, like an animal or an object. A man called Potiphar buys him. He was the captain of the guard of the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Joseph was going to have to work hard now for no pay. He could have been very sad or angry. He could have tried to escape, but he trusted God and he worked hard to please his master and God, his heavenly father, who he trusted to take care of him. Potiphar was very pleased with Joseph's attitude. As a reward for his hard work, he made him the manager over all his house, money, land and servants. God blessed everything Joseph did and this young man, who had been sold as a slave, rose to become very important and respected. Yet suddenly, as quickly as things got better, they went badly wrong and he found himself thrown into jail in disgrace. How did it all go wrong then? Potiphar's lazy wife had been watching Joseph, seeing how well he was getting on made her jealous. She planned to catch Joseph out when he was on his own. But when he refused to go along with her scheme, she accused him of attacking her and got him into very serious trouble. It could happen, if you are following Jesus, that God's enemies attack you. You may be unfairly judged and punished for something you have not done. If something like this happens to you, ask the Lord to help you, like Joseph did. Continue to trust God in the dark days. 
God helped him cope and he will help you cope if you ask him. Now in prison, no longer free, but being punished, these were very difficult days for Joseph. Alone in Egypt, how long would he be locked up? He must have questioned what was happening. He was faithful to God, though, by being honest and hardworking. The captain of the prison was very impressed, and again he was put in charge. He had some unusual experiences and met some interesting people. The prison was full of all kinds of criminals. Some of them were even members of Pharaoh's household. The prisoners talked to Joseph about their troubles, including Pharaoh's head baker and butler. When they both told him about their disturbing dreams, God helped Joseph to explain what the dreams meant, showing them what was going to happen next. Mark read to us about the butler and baker's dreams in Genesis chapter 40. Joseph predicted the butler was going to be restored to his position in the palace of Pharaoh. Sadly, the baker's dream also came true and he was hanged. When the butler was released, Joseph asked him to speak to Pharaoh about releasing him as well. But the butler forgot about him for over two years. Meanwhile, Joseph learned to trust God and wait for him to help. Important lessons for a pampered favourite child to grow into a wise, strong character. As a slave and a prisoner, he was bottom of the heap. He could get no lower. He was judged one of the world's worst. Still, he continued to be faithful to God. And when the right time came, the Lord could lift him up. Look at all the different pieces of Joseph's life. We will hear more about them next week. We can see a picture coming together. Have you ever watched someone sewing or painting a picture or made one yourself? With the first few stitches or brush strokes, it is hard to see what the picture will be. But later, as you look again and there is more there, you think it was not what you first expected. You needed to see more to understand what those first bits were going to be part of. You might look at the picture of Jesus dying on the cross and say, how can God have let that happen to his only son? But John 3 verse 16 says, God gave his son to be punished on the cross for our sins to save us. So the cross is not a sign of God losing or weakness. It shows victory for God and for Jesus and for us over sin and death. If we can see this, we should praise God and thank him as we can see the wonderful full picture. Maybe some sad things have happened in your life. You feel hurt, angry, let down. Maybe you want to push God away. But if we do that, who can help us then? God is the only one who has so loved us enough to give his son to make us his child forever. He wants to be our father who we can go to when we are sad and he will never let us down. He only can make the sad things in our life that are like dark shadows in the big picture work out well for our good. Many people look at this world and believe it just happened. God did not make it, they say. He does not rule and he will not judge us. Does that make sense to you? That this beautiful world just appeared out of nothing? A big bang? No. Let's ask God to help us to see the work of his hands in the world around us and in the things that happen in our lives. That is the only way things can make sense and we can be truly happy. Before I finish, I want to tell you a bit about my family. Some of you know that I am the mummy of four grown-up children, but only three are with me now. That is because one of my boys, my eldest son, called Paddy, got very sick when he was 10 years old. And when he was 15 years old, he died. Now he is in heaven with the Lord God. When he got sick, it was very hard he felt terrible. He had a lot of pain and the medicine they gave him made him feel worse. 
He was usually patient, but sometimes he would say, I wish this had never happened. I feel so ill and awful, and he would cry. When Paddy was 12, he truly believed and trusted in the Lord Jesus to save him from his sins. Not long after that, he got sick again. The doctor said he would not get better. He would die. That is an awful thing to hear. We were all very sad. But then God showed us that Paddy was going to live forever in heaven where he would not be sick anymore. Paddy was sad that he was not going to have a long life doing lots of things, that he would not be able to stay with all the people he loved. But as he got more sick, God showed him that heaven was the best place to be because when he got there, he would not be sick or sad or sinful. Do you see? God used the hard times of sickness to make Paddy ready for heaven. We sometimes feel sad as we miss Paddy, but God has comforted us and is reminding us that because we know Jesus, death only separates us for a little while and then there is heaven together with Paddy forever. Sometimes it is very sad and very hard, a bit like it was for Joseph being in prison. Nobody could help but God. But God. These two little words are full of power and hope. Here is an activity for you. Maybe someone older can help. Look up the Bible verses that say, but God, and see what else they say. Send your favourite but God verse to Mark. There is even a but God verse about Joseph. Can you find it? There will be a prize from me if you can write your favourite verse out and colour it and send it to the Take Home Sheet Gallery. God moves in a mysterious way, his wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps in the sea and rides upon the storm. This is part of a wonderful hymn. Many people quote the first line, God moves in a mysterious way. It means we cannot understand all that God does. So try and remember the second line, his wonders to perform. If we believe in Jesus, we can see these things go together. Our eyes of faith are opened to see the mysterious yet wonderful ways of God. I pray that his light will shine in your hearts today so that you will trust our loving Heavenly Father with your life, with all its ups and downs, like the Lord Jesus Christ did, like Joseph did, and like Paddy did. Amen. See you next time. And that was today's lesson at Tabernacle Cardiff Sunday School. It's time now to have a look at this week's memory verse, uh, which will come up on the screen uh, now. Uh, and it's this one. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favour in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And that's Genesis chapter 39 and verse 21. OK, so we'll say it again. Uh, you'll notice it starts uh, not with but God that we've just heard about more on that a little bit later. Um, but the Lord, um, but it's in essence the same uh, thing. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favour in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Genesis chapter 39 verse 21. Well, let's uh, have a look uh, now at uh, this week's take-home sheets, uh, which are now available to download in the usual uh, manner, in one of the usual two ways, um, either by clicking on the link um, in the description box with this video, um, or by going to the church's website, tabernaclecardiff.org, and there is a link there on the homepage for Sunday School 
take home sheets. Okay, so this week it is uh, lesson 34, so please make sure that you have uh, lesson 34 at the top of your uh, take home sheet for this week. And uh, let's have a look at the uh, infant's take home sheet, um, the plan and fo folds. Uh, strangely at first, uh, Joseph's ups and downs in Egypt. And there we can see um, our memory verse um, at the bottom uh, for the infants. And let's have a look at the juniors and the teenagers now. Again, you've got the, the same picture there, so number 34. And then you've got your Bible uh, readings and some questions over there on the left hand side. So I just want to uh, talk a little bit more about the um, activity that um, uh, Auntie Ali uh, talked about in her lesson. Um, and she asked you, didn't she, to um, find Bible verses that start with, but God. Uh, so we've done a little template for you. Uh, you'll be able to download that uh, from the same place as the take home sheets. Um, and so we've done kind of an outline for the infants. Um, and the juniors, um, sorry, the infants to colour in, and then the juniors and the teenagers, um, they can either write their own or they can use uh, this template. Um, so uh, you can write in there then the rest of the verse. Um, I will mix um, those contributions in then with uh, the take home sheets uh, next week. Okay, so I'd encourage you all to, to have a go at that, um, have a look through the Bible. Um, for verses beginning with but God um, and then writing the rest of the verses make sure you put your name at the bottom um, as well so that we can see who's done what um, also Ali mentioned that uh, she's happy to give prizes out to all those that do that so there's a, a good incentive um, for you all uh, as well well, let's uh, take some time now to look at your take home sheets from last week. Well, it's lovely to see uh, all uh, your best work in the Take Home Sheet Gallery. Uh, and it's nice to see uh, some new people contributing as well. So uh, I do encourage you all, uh, if you want to contribute, then please do uh, get in touch. Let's now uh, sing our closing hymn together, uh, which is this one. And it links in nicely with our story um, today. What a friend. We have in Jesus all our sins and griefs to bear. And then if you uh, look at the words in the second verse here, have we trials and temptations? Um, is there trouble anywhere? Well, certainly Joseph had lots of um, trouble and trials, didn't he? Uh, we should never be discouraged. Uh, take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? Who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer.
Well, it's been lovely to have you with us here today at Tabernacle Cardiff Sunday School, and I trust it's been a blessing to you too um, to be with us here in Sunday School. Well, let's close our time together now with a word of prayer. So let's make sure that we're sat nice and still. We have our hands together and our eyes closed. Gracious God and our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you that uh, once again we can come to thee in prayer. We thank you, Lord, that you are a great God, a God who loves us so much uh, that you sent your only begotten Son, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, down onto the cross of Calvary um, to die for our sins. Lord, we pray that you might show us our sins, Show us, Lord, our need of a saviour. Show us our way to the cross, Lord. And help us, Lord, uh, to come to know the Lord Jesus as our personal saviour. Lord, we pray that you would um, be with us now for this coming week. And we pray, Lord, that wherever we are, uh, that you might watch over us, Lord, and speak to us. And Lord, we pray that you'll bring us all back safely to Sunday school uh, the next Lord's Day, God willing. Uh, we ask all these things now in our Saviour's name, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>